we are back on, uh, th this is for, uh, for YouTube, obviously, this is the, we just finished Investigation Part 1, um, and we're on the final trial in the game, or the final episode in the game. Um, 4th November, 9.30 a.m., the Old Bailey Courtroom. Before we begin today, I have a brief announcement. As of the closed trial ten years ago, some astonishing facts have come to light in these pr proceedings. The revelation that the well-known Reaper is actually an organization illegally executing its own brand of justice, and the discovery that a respected yard inspector was at its heart until he himself perished in an assassination plot. Well, I say to all members of the judiciary here present on this occasion, uh, that we will stop at nothing to uncover the whole truth behind these disturbing findings. Counselors, you will undertake this trial with the resolve to pursue the truth until the bitter end. Resolve, yes. That's my intention. My lord, if I may inquire, the defendant may speak? On what grounds is customer so he can permitted to continue in his role as prosecutor? He is admitted to collude with the victim in a plot to assassinate an innocent man. He shouldn't be enjoying the privilege of freedom, let alone be leading the prosecution. I submitted a written petition to Lord Strongheart, requesting that the judgment of my transgression be delayed, soon be delayed by one day. You did what? In today's proceedings, I intend to expose everything. My whole life for the last ten years has all been leading up to this one day. Oh, that means we're in for the long run. Um, we may have to take a break if this goes on for a ridiculous amount of time. Uh, cause last time I- last time we did this, we did a whole chapter and it ended up being a, sev a seven hour stream. Uh, taking- and taking until like 6am the next day. Like I started at like- at like 11 sharp and then it just and then just went until like 6 a.m. <laughs> Cousin. Whatever the outcome of this trial, I give my word that I will accept whatever punishment is deemed appropriate, however severe. I suggest you prepare yourself for the same. We burn. Bristling with hostility. I get the distinct impression we're heading into very dangerous territory. Is that really even customer on the stand before us? An extreme exception to normal practices. As an extreme exception to normal practices, I have granted this prosecutor's request. The defense finds this acceptable, I presume. Yes, my lord. In that case, in the name of Her Majesty the Queen, I hereby declare this court to be in session again. We resume the closed hearing of Barak Van Seeks. The defense is ready, my lord. The prosecution is more than ready. Very well. This preamble has taken long enough. Prosecutor Asogi, begin. As you wish, my lord. The prosecution calls the first witness to the stand. I don't know why I'm saying so much. Bring Sisiro Ojikoku into the courtroom. At last, then, we've reached the final battle. He's putting literally everything on the line now in order to get to the truth. Come on, we will escape. 
It's time for that steely resolve, because this is going to test it to the limit. Witness, state your name and occupation for the record. <sighs> so it was you who issued this, was it? Your, sub your subpoena? I did what was necessary. <laughs> well, look what the young man has become. I didn't think I'd see the day when you take that tour with me, I must say. The witness will ensure his responses are pertinent to the questions asked. the Supreme Court judge from the Empire of Japan. Sixteen years, sixteen years ago, this man came to London as a visiting student. Six years later, he returned to Japan, as well as uh, presiding, um, uh, as well as presiding over the Supreme Court. He is also currently Japan's Minister of Foreign Affairs. I am, of course, fully aware of Mr. Shikoku and his preeminent worries. Invited him personally to the International Forensic Science Symposium as a representative of his country. I hear he also played a key role in the conclusion of the Anglo-Japanese Treaty of Friendship and Navigation. <laughs> ah, it was a great honor to be involved in the new negotiations. I put my all into that treaty. Judge Jikoku, I must ask. Well, I know. Fancy the young murdering student turning up here, of all places. I was found not guilty by you! You acquitted me yourself! And, you, and now I'm a practicing defense lawyer. Yes, and full of self importance like your friend across the courtroom, I see. You came here to London by the invitation uh, by invitation to the International Forensic Science Symposium. But then, without informing anyone of your plans, you took flight to France. Took flight? I'd have to object to that turn of phrase. Then explain yourself. What exactly were the circumstances? Well, I was somewhat expecting this. And I'm sorry to say. I declined to comment. What? Leaving the country prematurely when I was an invited guest may be questionable etiquette. But my decision is unrelated to this case. I can't be bound to testify. Unrelated, you say? That's not unrelated, though. I appreciate that a respected police inspector has been killed for which I offer my condolences. However, being an alien, I'd obviously never met the man, nor do I know the first thing about him. I'm in no position to testify. It's as simple as that. So you would run from all this? I beg your pardon? This case is more far-reaching than the murder of Inspector Gregson. It has ties to another murder. A case that was tried in Japan almost a year ago now. A year ago in Japan? The murder of Dr. John H. Wilson, you mean? That's right. And you, Judge Jigoku, are at the heart of both cases. The defense has evidence to prove it. Well, you're all scared. I can see, I see from the look in your eyes that you're ready to res uh, resolve to carry this through to the very end, too. Let's see your evidence, then. What proof do you have that Sishiro who's involved with this case? The Watch Crown. Take that! What on earth is that? This piece of evidence is a welcome present to the courthouse with the compliments of the defense. I have a poor cross of British Court Advocate Council. That's the extent of your resolve. You disappoint me. You know, in our hood. Uh, what? Huh? Okay, no. No. Uh, the game's wrong. The game is wrong. <laughs> 
Fucking... <laughs> Fine. I'll present the watch or some shit. I can't... I'm, like, I'm supposed to... <laughs> or I'll re-examine it or something. I don't fucking even know what I did. What I... There's some flag under the hood that didn't get checked off. <laughs> Alright, let's save... <laughs> Like, that's just the game, that's just the game being wrong. It literally even, it literally even says, a small machine part found in Judge Jigoku's room on the grooves. Alright, let's examine it. You see this thing is crown. Blah, 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 blah. Is it this then? I guess it's probably uh, it's probably this, but this should be the main thing that the the actual thing that you present. I'm gonna save again. This is because I mashed through dialogue for like the eighth time, but because we've seen because we've seen it before. Um, I'm gonna try this. Take that. Yeah. Okay. It is this. This is a telegram detailing communication sent between Britain and Japan approximately one year ago. The communication contained four names. Kiyosugi, A. Shin, T. Gregson, and J. Wilson. Oh, it. You, you little... Where did you get that? In Tokyo. From your office, Judge Jikoku. What? How on earth did you... What's all this about? Why is my name on that list? This list of four names follows a certain pattern. T. Gredson and John Wilson, or J. Wilson, are the names of victims. Kiyosogi and A. Shin are the names of assassins. No! A year ago in, a year ago in Tokyo, Dr. John H. Wilson's life was taken uh, in a western-style restaurant in the capital. The culprit was found to be a visiting student who went by the name of Giselle Brett. But her real name was Asa Shin, a professional killer sent on a mission to kill from Great Britain. A. Shin and her victim, J. Wil J. Wilson. <clears throat> and the murder that took place here in London was the counterpart to that crime. An assassin sent from Japan, and also also a visiting student, Kazuma Asogi, whose victim was the British police inspector Tobias Gregson. K. Asogi and T. Gregson. One assassin from each country to kill a target residing in the other. In the other. What is that different suggestion? These two cases of murder that took He's one took, that took place in Britain and one in Japan were masterminded by a pair of individuals from each country as a form of assassin exchange. And the telegram the defense has acquired is proof of this international contract to kill. What? What? The telegram was found in your office, Judge Jigoku. Oh, that would explain the mission he was talking about in Japan or in uh, Britain on in the first game. In other words, the mastermind in Japan was you. Judge Jigoku, what's all this? What's this all about? You, Kazuma. You lied. <gasps> During yesterday's proceedings, you acknowledged that you'd accepted the assassination mission, but the mark wasn't Judge Jigoku at all. It was T. Gregson, Detective Inspector of Scotland Yard, as shown by the name of the killing contract. Very impressive for you on the skin. But actually, I didn't lie. I was ordered to kill never passed my lips yesterday. 
Ah, uh, uh, yeah, he just said he went to kill the mark. The idea that Sushiroji Goku was the mark came entirely from you. Ah! You deliberately avoided seeing a name? The defense claims these four names indicate some sort of international assassin exchange. I'm sure I speak for all present when I say that the very idea seems utterly absurd. Well, Mr. Jikoku, what do you have to say for yourself? His silence only goes to prove his guilt. There's another very important point that this new development brings to light. There's now a distinct possibility that the scene in Inspector Grunson's actual murder was in the witness's cabin aboard the SS Gross. Judge Jigoku, you have to testify now. To, to refuse will put you in contempt of court. <laughs> There's no need for quite such a vicious stare, young man. Very well then, as a parting gift to you all, I'll tell you everything I know. It seems this Japanese gentleman has information that the court must hear about the alleged assassin exchange and the events of the night of 31st October. Present your formal testimony now. As you wish, my lord. It's true the customer also he was assigned the assassination mission one year ago now. The target was Inspector T. Grimson. That was the condition of a upper condition of the British study tour. However, in the end, something happened that meant the young man was unable to carry out his mission. On the evening in question, a member of the crew was on duty outside my cabin at all times. If there had been a shot fired, the crew had run away, so I clearly can't be involved. Got it. So you admit it then. As this communication suggests, there really was an assassin exchange arrangement between Britain and Japan. A political endeavor at the highest levels, not something I can discuss here. To use such a worthy practice as foreign study to coerce someone to commit murder? It's the most appalling thing I've heard, ever heard. Appalling? Well, it's easy to judge. Pardon? Asugi had a reason for taking his sword to that British inspector, you know. What? Which is why he accepted the mission in the first place. Isn't that right, Consul? Kasumasa? Judge Jigoku, if you were the mastermind behind all or behind this operation in Japan, then tell the court the identity of your counterpart in Britain. I'm not obliged to divulge that information. I, th yeah, I think you already have. As I said yesterday, I've killed nobody. I freely admitted that I accepted the mission, but on the night the plan was to be executed, I backed out. In short, the assassination exchange that the defense has identified as unrelated to the events of this case. The crucial point is this. Your police inspector can't have perished aboard that steamship in Gun Dunkirk. Because if he'd been shot in the cabin, it's inconceivable that a member of cr the crew wouldn't have heard it. That's right. Cranston was killed after returning to London, in the room on Fresno Street. of the crime was the Reaper, Barrett Van Zeeks. The prosecution's accusation remains unchanged. <gasps> to think that the seemingly innocent foreign exchange program was a facade for such Machiavellian dealings. 
Today, it's a plot only a government minister and high-ranking judge, such as the witness, could hope to execute. Well, they seem to recall that it was someone on the point side who controlled everything. Male strong heart. Be that as it may, it is not the place of this court to pursue this villainous assassination or assassin exchange plot. We are only concerned with the tangible events pertaining to the murder of Inspector Gregson. Is the defense clear on that point, counsel? Yes, my lord. I'll keep that in mind as I cross examine the witness. That's the warning of Inspector Gregson. Study tour. Hold it! Outside your cabin, in the first class area of the SS Gross Unit. Yes, that's right. Not the least bit because not least because there was a murder of a student passenger earlier in the her, I imagine. The line operators have taken to posting crew a crewman outside every first class cabin door. I could confirm the presence of the crewman guard myself. What do you mean? Because I accompanied Inspector Grayson to Dunkirk that night, I witnessed it with my own eyes. There was a well bit crewman standing guard directly in front of the door to the witness's cabin. At that particular time, of course, I had gone to the ship's dining room for dinner. The inspector and the, I asked the crewman to allow us into the cabin while we waited for Judge Jigoku's return. I suppose Inspector Grayson was there in his capacity as the reaper. He was intending to take the witness's life. Exactly. As I've said numerous times now, I had no intention of killing anyone. So the crew um, and let two potential assassins into the cabin he was supposed to be guarding? Not the most convincing of sentries, really. In truth, those were my thoughts too. But anyway, I stayed to talk with Inspector Gregson for a short while. And then I left him there and made my way off the ship alone. Was the guard still at the door when you left? Yes. He glared at me as I walked past. You see? That proves it. Directly outside your cabin door, you mean? That's right. A muscular man with a permanent grip expression on his face. He didn't move once from that spot. To be honest, I thought he was a miserable fellow. But as it happens, he's a vital witness now. There's no doubt that Grayson was killed by a gunshot. And it's inconceivable that a crewman standing just outside the cabin wouldn't have heard that. But wait, what about the ship's enormous steam engines? The noise of them we could have drowned out the sound of a gun being fired. Sadly, your judicial assistant, that won't wash. Oh? You will recall that my cabin was in the first class area of the ship. This is also, of course, the quietest. I don't, don't imagine for a moment that it's um, uh, like any, anything like the steerage where the judicial assistants go. I didn't mean. But a whole, like. Uh, that made of a bullet was found in your cabin, Judge Jigoku. That's compelling the evidence the gun was fired in there. What's that? A bullet hole? Oh, yes. You're talking about what the detective uncovered in the wall yesterday, I presume. That was obviously a rotten panel eaten up by Woodward. No doubt he'd find an that. He didn't find an actual bullet. Ugh, that's the hole in this argument. Sadly, I was unable to arrange for the crewman to be brought back to Britain with me. But obviously, if a gun had been fired in my cabin in the, in the night, uh, 
had on the night in question that if it's wise, I would have been arrested on the spot and would never have made it to Britain in the first place. Very true, the witness's logic is sound. Since no gunshot was heard from the witness's cabin in the night in question, we must assume that the witness is telling the truth. <laughs> I'm glad you've seen since my lord. No cousin was already taking on this incredible assassination plot, but even so, being confirmed by someone else is a real shock. Oh, real shock. It's unforgivable! Using cousin with someone's feelings to manipulate him into agreeing with such a despicable plan! My dear, could the Kazuma manipulated Judge Jigoku too? He completely double crossed him. Oh dear, it's hard not to see that as a stroke of brilliance on Kazuma's part. It's the most part. Gregson ended up dead. I really think that the murder must have happened aboard the steamship. So you mean... Judge Jacob must be lying. I know I shouldn't let my emotions call my judgment, but you must destroy him, Mr. Naruto. Alright, well, let's just... Um... I'm gonna save here. Because we have we have a copy of the orders. Because uh, it says right here, he was outside at all times, but he couldn't have been there if he was following the evacuation drill. Objection! Yes, as the court has heard, there was a crewman posted outside Judge Jikoku's cabin. However. We can be sure that, contrary to the witness's claim, the guard wasn't there at all times. What? I have your notice of a particular event that was scheduled to take place on board the, the steamship on the 31st. Whoa, where did you get that? It's evidence gathered by Mr. Herlock Shultz. You were acquainted yesterday. You were acquainted yesterday, if you remember. Herlock Shultz again. According to this itinerary, after leaving the port, the port of Dunkirk at exactly 10 p.m. and the per for a period of 20 minutes, all crewmen of the SS groups were to gather on deck for an evacuation drill. All crewmen were away from their posts? And during that 20 minute interval, of course, any gunshots emanating from your cabin would have been heard by no one. Aside from the neighboring cabins. <laughs> In summary, Judge Jigoku. These two guys are really playing at down how loud a gunshot is. <laughs> you had ample opportunity to commit the crime. Ugh. Objection! A 20 minute winter of opportunity. That's an excellent find we don't escape. I don't know what I'm saying, I'm trying to say here. But it amounts to nothing. Why? Because the witness clearly stated in his testimony that he, that no incident occurred at his cabin. Unless you have some decisive evidence that can show his testimony to be false. I do actually have evidence that I tried to present earlier that would have. Your accusation is nothing more than conjecture. Very true, well, counsel. Inspector Gresson was killed in Judge Jigoku's cabin that night. I'm certain of it. Because the defense has the evidence to prove it. You will present the evidence to, for the defense at once, Counsel. What proof do you have that the victim's life was taken in Judge Jigoku's cabin on the 31st October? This small component. Take that! Judge Jigoku! This was found in your cabin yesterday. What is that? The crown of a pocket watch? Uh, a pocket watch? And if you will observe, the victim's pocket watch, which we know he treasured, is missing precisely that part. It can't be! Moreover, 
the crown. This crown is a perfect fit on the spindle protruding from the victim's uh, watch. <gasps> now, the fact that this was retrieved from Judge Degoku's cabin tells us that the victim's watch almost certainly broke there. In other words, the victim was killed on the 31st during the 20-minute evacuation drill. In the cabin occupied by you, Judge Jigoku. Well, you're razor sharp, aren't you, you young murderer? Objection! It's about the maneuver, but we are not okay. <gasps> Your argument sounds entirely plausible. At first. But rather like this pocket watch. It's full of cracks. What? And I believe... Judge Shikoku feels the same way. I was wrong to acquit you earlier in the year. Sorry? If I'd known that it would result in anyone having to listen to this story from I would have declared you guilty just to spare the world a ridiculous bombast. <laughs> I think it's clear that the witness will have to give further testimony. When you hear what actually happened in, that, in my cabin that night, you'll notice the pitfall into which you've stumbled. Provide your new testimony. I would like to clarify one point. Prior to your... Hold on. Prior to your new testimony, I would like to clarify one point. The fact that this part of the victim's watch discover was discovered in your cabin means that you acknowledge he was there, I presume? Yes, I do. Very well, then. You may proceed to give your formal testimony. What would exactly happen in your cabin aboard the ship on the evening of the 31st of October? Of course. As a man of the law, I have no intention of obstructing justice. Events in the cabin. I had a guest waiting for me when I arrived. I uh, returned to my cabin after finishing my evening meal in the dining room. Honestly, I kind of saved it too late. Whatever. Uh -huh. When I walked through the door, a mustachioed Englishman was there, foolishly waving a gun at me. I soon took care of him with an upon sale a throw, though. He couldn't wait to run away after that. I imagine his watch was broken when I threw him over my shoulder. It has nothing to do with his murder. This victim was quickly killed and we returned to Britain because his body was found in London. Ippon Seoi? A common jujitsu martial arts technique in my country. I was careful not to use too much force, but the man obviously landed too heavily for his watch to take. So we are no scared, in no model. I imagine you can see the flaw in your logic now, can't you? Do you have any idea how hard you would have to throw somebody to break this? That's metal, dude. Um. What? The fact that the pocket watch was broken in the witness's cabin. In no way proves that the victim's murder took place in there. In there. Arr! I have no doubt the inspector intended to kill me, but he didn't manage to pull the trigger. Yes, because he was merely the tactician, not the reaper's hand of death. Well, the testimony appears to make perfect sense as far as I can tell. 
me express my deep gratitude for your understanding, my lord. If the testimony holds, Judge Shikoku will be deemed to have no involvement in the case. Well, Counsel, I really see no reason to waste his precious time, uh, court time here on a cross examination. I, I keep pulling the screen up and that of force of habit. Why is he so... Sorry, my lord. The defense has a right to cross-examine, and I don't intend to squander that. Also, this is the first... Also, this is the first time he's been like, Hey, I'd... Uh, hey, I really wish you... I hope you don't cross... Uh, like, hey, I don't see why we should cross-examine the guy. Like... To your countrymen, not knowing when you're beaten. In that case, proceed, Mr. Norhodo. Police inspector, which was the truth, of course. Is this is type of withdrawal of the same issue for the judiciary. Ah, uh, serial number for all you know. There's nothing with that on this gun. Issue longer than. Uh, well, I sure wish my character. I, I sure wish we would be allowed to count the rounds in the chamber. Well, I guess if we look here, there's none. Or rather, the rounds in the. Um... So I don't know if this square is supposed to be like, hey, these are the bullets, and they just did a really terrible job of them, of it. Or not. Also, what's with this? That just that would prevent this would actually this right here would actually prevent the chamber from rotating in the revolver. Yeah. Obviously, so with this big freaking square. No, oh, you know what? The square might be there to divert gas, to divert expended gas away from, um, the wielder's fingers. Apparently, Grayson, well, oh, it's the truth, of course. He would have had his identification with him, though. He had his trench coat and mustache, not to mention the bag of chips. I imagine the crew was convinced. But the man accompanying him would have had two sword. Would have had two sword, no plur, no no plural, two swords slung around his waist. You mean me? Who else? Yes, that's true. He would have hoped the sight of a few swords might serve as of alarm bells in the god's head. The point is, I left the camp, and then before its occupant returned, and I immediately disembarked the ship. Certainly, all that all I can tell you is that only the inspector was waiting for me when I arrived back at my cabin. And you entered without any, and you entered without any inkling of suspicion. That's right, none whatsoever. Hold it! Oh, 
so you're talking about Inspector Gregson? Yes, though at the time I didn't know the man's name. There was no time for introductions. I value my life over manners. By which you mean that the inspector was there to assassinate you, I suppose. That was certainly an impression given by the gun pointing in my direction. But I've never seen the muzzle of a revolver shake about so much in my all my life. Anyone would think the man had never shot somebody before. Believe it or not, most of us haven't. Anyway, there was no time to call for help. The crewman at the door, so I dealt with the man myself. Hold it! You didn't know the little man had a gun? That was a very brave move, wasn't it? <laughs> My pencil is faster, far faster than a bullet, I can assure you. That's definitely false. Maybe faster than the person trying to to line up the shot, but but surely all that commotion caused the crewman to come in, didn't it? Huh? Yes, of course. He burst in immediately without knocking. The inspector heard himself at the stocking problem and just managed to slip past him to make his escape. Now standing guard does it again. There aren't many situations I can't get out of using a quick eponce or ether. Watch was found at the scene, wasn't it? picture of the scene. Well, I guess that doesn't really matter. Um... Snapped off in the glass covering the face of the watch was cracked. Probably the man's head being pulled off a spine cracking, wouldn't you say? Not that the man was spared from a bullet to the chest soon saw to that. I thought I, thought I heard the audio go break. But the point is, a bro the broken pocket watch doesn't prove that a murder took place. My jujitsu throat. Whatever you say, it doesn't quite ring true that no shot was fired in that cabin. And the audio did break. Because there was an obvious bullet hole in the wall. <laughs> what are you talking about? Hmm? That's what the star of your lowbrow detective stories told you, is it? Well, I don't care for such fiction. Did not get your little stripling? No murder took place in my cabin. I'm not really sure what to present here, and where I think this is where we need to present 
think we need to present the updated autopsy report, right? Let's press it first, actually. There's no evidence that prisons and the victim have returned to London alive. It just take a moment to think that an idea of us too now striking. What? The inspector was killed on the steamship in France. How on earth could you have got back to Britain? Um when people die and their bodies remain at that same spot. It's a devil of a thing. Obviously, the problem must have moved the body. How exactly? Carrying the corpse off the ship in your arms would raise a few eyebrows at least, don't you think? Well, yes, that's true, but. Expected when they're just unloaded from arriving vessels. And I would like to think that the border police would, be, would query a corpse of an English gentleman as a hand of into luggage. If the murder had taken place on, bo on board the ship, you would imagine the body would have been disposed of at sea. There would be no sense in risking being caught. By attempting to, tra to transport the body back to Britain. Ugh, that's killed the, uh, that idea then. But perhaps not! Mrs. Zato? We've heard that the first class passengers were under constant scrutiny by the crewman posted to guard them, which would mean that the culprit had no opportunity to dispose of the body in the sea. Yes, that's true. So transporting the body to Britain may have been the only viable alternative. Dear me, you really are new to this, aren't you? <laughs> I thought I'd be perfectly clear, but it seems like what I to explain it in words you can understand. I think I'll talk to my testimony, with your consent, of course, my lord. I have no objections. State your mental testimony now. There's no possible way I could transform the victim's corpse back to Britain. No possible way you could move Inspector Gretzen's body, you say? I would say the opposite is true. And what's that supposed to mean? Far from being impossible for you to do, is the transporting of the Inspector Gretzen's body back to Britain is something only you could do. What are you talking about, Rinosuke? As well as being a judge, Mr. Jigoku is also Japan's Minister of Foreign Affairs. Which means, he's exempt from having his luggage searched when he enters the country. Hmm. We learned that when we first met you upon your arrival in London. <gasps> oh. Well, all those passport checks and luggage searches. At the border took rather a lot of time. I must say I'm very envious of your ministerial status. But to go through it with that, and did you? Oh, I, I knew you were just. Ha 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 ha. I presume you recall this, Judge Jigoku. As 
a photograph I took in the foyer of the hotel to mark the occasion. As the court will note, you have with you your large travel trunk. Large enough, in fact, to have a corpse inside. Mr. Orhoto! Surely you're not suggesting! I'm afraid I am, yes. Three days ago, when we were chatting innocently with the new arrivals from Japan in the hotel, the body of Inspector Grayson was just meters away from us inside Judge Jigoku's trunk. <gasps> Order, 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 order in the court. I'm skeptical, counsel, uh, with a C instead of a K for some reason. The, a grown man's body it could fit, even fit inside the largest travel trunk. It could. Because I happen to know that the witness himself, a man of considerable size, fits inside his trunk. Verifying that would be extremely simple, wouldn't it, Judge Jigoku? But, but inside his trunk? How horrifying! And after we'd spoken to you at the Great Waterloo Hotel, you had the opportunity to visit the apparent scene on Fresno Street. Taking your trunk with you, a cab, to deposit the inspector's body. I don't like to listen to this nonsense! Dr. Gory, the coroner who examined the body, has confirmed the possibility. She's acknowledged that there are signs that steps may have been taken to disguise the true time of death. The onset of the body's decomposition could have been delayed by storing it in a refrigerator. Counsel, as I remember explaining yesterday, refrigerators of that requisite size are few and far between. Yes, I'm sure they are, but one place they're certainly found is on a large is on large ocean liners. <gasps> Ship, such ships are equipped with electrically refrigerated cold rooms to keep food fresh on their long sea voyages. In the SS Roos is no exception. Professor Mikotoba told me yes about it only yesterday. Well, Judge Jigoku? However much you prolong this debate, you can't eliminate the truth. All the evidence points to you being the killer. <laughs> well, this is all very heartening. I can see that it was a wise move letting Asogi and you embark on this study tour. What are you talking about? What are you talking about now? Logical reasoning, of course. All court proceedings will be built on logical reasoning in the new century. And I can see that you both laid firm foundations for that already. Judge Jikoku, please, stop diverting attention from the issue at hand. The defense has made an accusation against you. How do you respond? Respond? There's really no need for me to respond, is there? Why ever not? Because before you can even begin to answer the question of when the victim was killed, you must first establish one key fact. Where was the victim- where was the victim killed? It's quite logical. The actual scene of the crime... The prosecution's stance is unaltered. The killing took place on Fresno Street when the gunshot was heard. As the accused, Baron Van Zeek shot the victim at point-blank range. Since no tangible evidence exists to disprove the prosecution's claim at this time, the defense's deductions are not to little more than an elaborate fairy tale. I'm afraid that's how log the logical reasoning British... Uh, the logical reasoning the British are known... How the logical reasoning the British are known for really works in striking. I'm sorry, that sentence tripped me up. The victim was shot in that little room on Fresno Street and died instantly? I'm afraid it's the prosecution's claim that's the only fairy tale here. How can 
you say that? Quite simply. Because that directly, claim directly contradicts a certain piece of evidence in our possession. <gasps> Very tantalizing, Counsel. I think you had better explain yourself to the court, don't you? The prosecution claims that Inspector Gretzen died instantly when he was shot uh, at the scene on Fresno Street. But this evidence clearly contradicts that claim. Not the suitcase. I was thinking it was the blood stain on the suitcase. The wig, then, right? Take that! A photograph of the victim in the very location he you claim he wasn't killed? Yes, but the point is the posture of the body itself. <gasps> if Inspector Gregson had been shot there in that room, it's out of the question that his body would have curled up in a ball like that. Or been curled up in a ball like that. Objection! I'm sorry to disappoint you, but your logic is flawed. He could easily have adopted the fetal position, that fetal position due to the pain. The shot which subsequently Objection! I'm sorry to disappoint you, Judge Jigoku, but that but it's your logic, but it's your logic that is flawed. What? According to this autopsy report, the victim died instantly. He would have felt no pain, much less have been able to draw himself into that position. Ugh. Which begs the question of why the victim's body was curled up in that way. Though the answer should be abundantly clear by now. No, no suggesting. The inspector's body took on that posture ahead of its arrival on Fresno Street before it was coldly turned out onto the floor from the inside of a large travel truck. No! You're quite right! The shape of the body! It looks exactly as if it had been kept in a confined space! Judge Jigoku, present your trunk for examination. I believe it's very possible that it will contain traces of the victim's blood. Ugh. Uh, better yet, Bailiff, go get his trunk. Present my trunk, I refuse. What? On what grounds? I'm the Minister of Foreign Affairs from the Empire of Japan. I shouldn't be have to put up this treatment just because some striplings of some striplings baseless accusation. In other words, Judge Yugoku, there is blood in your trunk. I decline to answer that. As the Minister of Foreign Affairs, I have privileges that the belong to at this moment, you're not a government minister. You're a witness in a trial in Britain's highest court. <gasps> I don't care who you are or what your status outside this courtroom might be. You will not withhold information. Nothing is more important than the truth. <sighs> order! Order in the court! Well, Mr. Jigoku, what's it to be? You can't be serious. You did it? Have you no shame at all, Kazumasuki? What? Very well, I admit it. And you're like, I admit that there's blood in there, but it's not the victims. I did bring the inspector's body into the country. Inside my trunk, and Satsu is postulated by the defense. Oh, but I didn't kill him! What? You... Dear God! Outrageous! 
So it was you. You admit to Inspector Crescent's mo- No, I admit to nothing more than what I've said. <gasps> of killing a man, I certainly have no recollection. What on earth is that cryptic statement supposed to mean? I merely disposed of the inspector's body which was left in my cabin. In order to avoid unwanted attention. As the judicial assistant over there pointed out, I had no chance to throw it in the ocean. So, I decided my only option was to bring it into Britain with meat and dispose of it somewhere else. Gee, you can't still deny it. If you didn't do it, then who on earth did kill the man? As you know, there was one other person in my cabin that night. He had the opportunity. And moreover, he'd already accepted a mission to take the Inspector's life. Oh! That's right. Who else could it have been? It was you, Kasuma Sogi. You! I never thought you'd stoop to this, Sishiro Higoku. You dig the words straight out of my mouth, Prosecutor Kasuma Sogi. Leaving that bot the body in my cabin, you can put the crime on me, did you? <gasps> well, the prosecution counsel has already admitted to visiting the witness's cabin on the night in question. Yes, on an assassination mission, no less. You, you wouldn't. So, what do you make of that, young stripling? You've heard my testimony now, and that's all I have to say on the matter. I'll admit to nothing more. I... I don't believe this! Council of the Defense... What is your position now? The court awaits your response to the witness's assertion. The assertion that on the night in question, the victim's assailant was in fact Mr. Kasuma Sogi. This is at the dead end, it seems to be. The answer's right in front of me. It comes down to Jigoku, or Kazuma. Both of them had the opportunity to kill Gregson, but one of them did it. <clears throat> I'm just a step away from proving who. Very well. The defense is ready to respond with the assertion put to the assertion put forward by Judge Jigoku. After I save the game, because you're gonna ask me to name the idea that the victim's murder could have been committed by Prosecutor Sugi is impossible. Judge Jigoku, let me remind you of something you said only a few minutes ago. You claim that logical reasoning is the future of the judicial process. It is. No question. Well, your logical reasoning can prove something here. Namely that it would have been impossible for Prosecutor Asogi to commit the crime. <gasps> the court will only, the court will only accept an argument that is unsupported by compelling evidence. So present what you have, counsel. What proof is there that allegedly demonstrates the impossibility of Prosecutor Asogi's involvement? Wasn't it? Sorry? Every piece of evidence has a role to play in arriving at the truth. Okay. I guess it wasn't the fact that he didn't doesn't own a gun. <laughs> or that he doesn't ha carry a gun or use a gun. <laughs> Ooh. 
Okay. It's impossible. Demonstrates the impossibility of prosecutor associates involvement. Frankson's trunk. There's no blood. There's no. I mean, there's no blood. The blood is only in this one little area, right? Take that. Okay, that wasn't it either. I don't know exactly. I don't know exactly what it's looking for. That's the problem. <laughs> I'm assuming impossible is the correct choice here, but just in case. Because these games do occasionally lead you into a trap and make you, um... Make it seem like you're on the right path and then the trap you into... It being, like, impossible. It's the impossibility of a series involvement. This is a really nice song, I will say. rough because we're still in a case from the previous chapter. <laughs>
Oops. Take right. that. Nope. I don't know what I'm like. I don't know what I'm supposed to present here. I don't even know if impossible is the correct decision here. Um... The possibility of Prosecutor Asogi's involvement. very much a, a I, I have no idea I'm just gonna say something <laughs> or try something um Is everything that seems like it would be relevant? Small component. Take that! Nope. Problem is everything that seems relevant is <laughs> like showing up as wrong. <laughs> I guess it means it's probably something that doesn't seem relevant, but...
It's gotta be something really random. It's gonna be something really random. <laughs> um, I wonder if it's. I do. I am one, starting to wonder if it's like um that this is a trick where we're supposed where we can't actually disprove it. This. Um. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna look this one up, <laughs> I think, uh, cause at this point I'm literally just like, I'm pretty sure it is impossible, I just, I don't know what I'm missing here. <laughs> Itinerary from the crew members of the SS Gross, my lord. This is conclusive proof. An itinerary? How does that prove anything? Judge Jigoku, the moment you acknowledge that you found the victim's body in your cabin, this itinerary suddenly became much more significant. But why? On the night in question, as always, a crewman sentry was on guard outside your cabin door. As long as he was there, nobody could have fired a shot inside the cabin. Absolutely. But does it seem conceivable that the guard wouldn't have heard it him to investigate? So that tells us that the crime must have been taking place when the guard was elsewhere. And that narrows it down to the 20 minutes just after 10 o'clock as indicated on the itinerary. Yes, I see no flaw in your reasoning so far, although it's more of like a... It's an, actually an even smaller window because you have to go... To consider how that, like, even if he was just like, like a couple of steps away, then, or like a, a minute away or whatever, he probably still would have heard the gunshot because gunshots are loud as as are very very loud. We keep downplaying how loud gunshots actually are. But the crucial point is this: when the evacuation drill took place, the steamship had already put to sea from the port of Dunkirk. Ugh. Now, clearly the murder could have only been committed by somebody who was aboard the vessel at the time. But Prosecutor Osogi stated in yesterday's proceedings, I didn't come to Great Britain to take anyone's life, so I left Greece and then disembarked the ship. I spent that night on a boarding house in town and then returned to England the following morning. Which I'm sure the court will agree is conclusive proof that Kasuma Asogi couldn't possibly have carried out the killing. 
Hold it! No, absolutely not. I don't accept that at all. What do you mean? The boy's just doing that to exonerate himself. We can't truly really trust that he really doesn't part of the vessel. Obviously, after he left my cabin and he hid himself somewhere nearby on the ship. Just waiting. Waiting for his chance Objection. to come back and finish the. No, that's out of the question. Isn't it, cousin? As the defense really recalls, I just embarked the vessel and spent the night at a boarding house in Dunkirk. As I said yesterday, I signed my name in the accommodations register book. All extremely easy to verify and undeniable proof. Oh, no, I... There's no escape this time. You can forget that you're a judge or government minister. It's time you gave the court an honest answer, as a common man. <laughs> you killed Inspector Tobias Grayson and transported his corpse back to Britain. Then you dumped the body in the room on Fresno Street and made it look as if the murder had happened there. That's what really happened, isn't it, Seshiro Jigoku? It was that damned trial ten years ago. That's when all this began. Looking back now, my fate was decided that day. I was doomed already. Rawr! It's over. My life is over. A British assassin to eliminate a professor in Japan. A Japanese assassin to eliminate a detective in Britain. Both assassins will use diplomatic immunity to evade conviction and return safely to their homelands. The assassin exchange request arrived from Britain about one year ago, though it was hardly a request, it was a demand. And for that, we decided to recruit Mr. Asogi. But things didn't go according to plan. But things didn't go according to plan. Your ass chosen assassin never made it to Britain, and you found yourself unable to dispatch a replacement. Because I was already on my way to Britain at that time in Cosmo's place. And that left me with only one option for carrying out my obligation. To eliminate the mark myself, personally. Of course, there was but a single opportunity for me to do that. The International Forensic Science Symposium, I presume? That's right. I decided it would be safest to carry out the plan before my arrival in Britain. So I enlisted the help of my British counterpart and made arrangements for a pretext that would allow uh, take the inspector to gut Dunkirk. To lure the man in, he was given a sham mission by the Reaper. W what? The Reaper? But the only one... But there's only one person who could have done that. The mastermind of the entire operation. The Reaper himself. Ah. So, that means that the assassin exchange was... was all planned by the Reaper. I'm not at liberty to say anything about my British counterpart. Anyway, the inspector accepted the Reaper's mission and dutifully infiltrated my cabin on the stage. But it was all a trap designed to lead him to France and his own death. Oh, how awful! It was past nine o'clock when I returned to my cabin from the dining hall that evening. I didn't give him time to attack me. I choked him out until he lost consciousness. But there was a guard just outside the door, so I left it at that for the time being. 
even the slightest noise might have aroused suspicion, so I bided my time and waited. For the twenty minutes after ten o'clock, I had attempted to finish up my strangulation, but moments before I had the chance, I suddenly came around and worked for me in a reckless way. The British's new gun 16 years ago, earlier than being a member of the, uh, the judiciary as a visiting student. I never imagined I'd have to use it for something like that. So the revolver belongs to you, does it? The victim was killed inside your cabin on the SS Bruce, which begs the question. Why you arranged for his body to be discovered in the room on Fresno Street? The young judicial assistant with us already answered that question. There was no way I could take the body up on the deck and throw it over to the side. That's precisely where all the crewmen were gathered for the evacuation trip. So of all the first couple. Last mm, Captain Sitchin's return, I took the corpse down to the refrigeration. But then on arriving in Dover, you concealed the body in your trunk in order to smuggle it past the border police. I knew I needed to take steps at the police were to be convinced when the body was found in London. In that case, you must have known. You must have had, had intimate details of Chief Inspector of Inspector Grin. Since intended schedule. Yes, my British counterpart sent me everything I needed to know. The inspector was due at the Fresno Street at 5 o'clock that afternoon. In order to meet a man by the name of Hugh, from whom he would take back his police identification. Ah! I decided that the, uh, that man would be the perfect person to set up as the culprit. So I took a hackney carriage over there with the body still in my trunk. That must have been just after we took this photograph of the other hotel down. Yes, I wasn't expecting a welcome committee. I was more than a little nervous. On Fresno Street, I spotted a young girl selling firecrackers. Also, this is weird to say, but I'm just now noticing that these are that all of. My buttons are attorney badges from the other Ace Attorney games. Miss Venus, of course. I can see through the casual trick there and then. So I donned a simple disguise and approached the girl to buy enough firecrackers to replicate a gunshot. What sort of disguise? For some reason, the inspector had a bright red hairpiece in his little traveling case. So I put that on, although I suspect I drew more attention to myself in that uh, than I would have otherwise. The hairpiece were found at the scene. The inspector had it read me for the red-headed league investigation. I had arrived. I only arrived at the room at a, around a quarter to five. So I, I quickly placed the body on the floor and moved to the notice board and set up my little uh, candle trick. They heard the gunshot at five. I arranged it so the firecrackers would go for the bang around 15 minutes later. So that Mr. Boone, who was due to arrive at five, would walk straight into a trap? Except, at the last moment, I made a careless blunder. What was that? I imagine, I imagine it was the bag of fish and chips. Ah. That had fallen out of his overcoat when I moved the body to the refrigeration room. Put it back in, into his pocket the following morning. Well, it seems the warmth of the heated cabin had accelerated the decay of the fish. Anyway, that's. That's everything. All the sort of details of what I did. This isn't over yet, though. You had a conspirator. Our co-conspirator. Uh, 
I've heard enough. You write the truth about the murder of one of the country's most capable and respected police inspectors. The witness will be tried in the coming days. For a crime of such a vile nature, you can expect the most severe penalty. Change of assassins? What a foolhardy idea! Mr. Yoku, one last detail. Who is your counterpart in here? Who was the mastermind behind the assassin exchange? Nothing you say now can make matters any worse. For you. Just tell us. Enough! And I've already told you that I cannot say. Even though as things stand, you may very well never set foot in your homeland again. What are you, what are you waiting for? Can't we get this over with now? It's finished. All of it. I'm finished. Then, in the name of Her Majesty the Queen, I now pronounce the findings of this court. This man before us has admitted to the willful murder of Tobias Gregson. Sishiro Jigoku, it is the opinion of this court that you should be found guilty. Wait, I'm confused. Wait, I'm very- hold on. And may I remind all those present of the strict confidentiality demanded by this closed court. But- Huh? That's di no, that's different from how that normally goes. Why why did the defendant not take the stand again? Moments ago, Mr. J Goku signed a written confession, admitting to the murder of Inspector Grayson and the subsequent conveyance of the body. In short, the defense and its innocence has therefore been established beyond doubt. Oh, wonderful! Well done, Mr. Naruto! Yeah, uh, thank you. Is something wrong? I'm just a little troubled. His silence. The true identity of the Reaper of the Bailey and this extraordinary assassin exchange. We do remain in the dark about these mysteries. However, insofar as the indictment brought against the defendant in this trial, we have reached a conclusion. I have every intention of assuming both mysteries. As a prosecutor. As you wish. Now for the formal adjudication. I hereby declare the defendant Barak Van Zeeks. Objection! The prosecution calls for adjudication and to be deferred. Counsel? The accused innocence hasn't been fully established at all. What do you... Yes, it has. In this particular case, yes, it has. And therefore, it would be wrong to deliver a verdict at this time. That is the prosecution's unwavering position. What? But Judge Goku has already confessed. Nevertheless, Berk Van Zeeks has committed crimes for which he must be punished. Well, 
You would appear that you have information that the court needs to hear, Prosecutor Sogi. Certainly, the murder in Smith of Hudson was actually carried out by Sashiro Jigoku. But it's clear from the witness's testimony that he was coerced into complying with the law. Into this slick, merciless, ass sick, merciless assassin exchange. Th that, that may be true, but... So what I want to know is, who coerced Jigoku? Who was pulling the strings? The victim went to France, having been ordered on a mission for the Reaper, only to be murdered. In other words, the mastermind behind the assassin exchange is someone who is in a position to give such an order. As we've already established, the Reaper himself. Well, certainly, that would appear to follow. The prosecution hereby formally accuses the man of the dark Barak Van Zeeks of being the Reaper of the Bailey. And furthermore, I'm going to prove his guilt beyond all reasonable doubt. Standing Mystery Council. Are you suggesting you have some new information with which to build a case? The scholarly Yard has already investigated Ward Renzix very thoroughly in that regard, and they found no evidence whatsoever to substantiate the claim that he is the Reaper. Perhaps, but circumstances have now changed. What do you mean? It's already been established that the Assassin Exchange was negotiated with Jigoku by the Reaper himself. Which means we now have a new line of questioning by which to identify the, you know, definitively the man's identity. That is the prosecution's intention here. I must say I'm surprised. Not quite how tenaciously you appear to want to besmirch my name. You are guilty of an unforgivable crime, Lord Van Seeks. And I will bring it to justice for it, whatever it takes. That is what has caused me silence before. I feel stop at nothing to finish what Lord Vancey's unwittingly started ten years ago. Very well. Well, this was extremely irregular. I will on this occasion grant the prosecution further opportunity for witness testimony. The defendant will disclose any and all involvement he has had with the Reaper and the Assassin Exchange. I thank you, my lord, for guiding the court so wisely. I hereby declare this court to be in session for a supplementary hearing. Hey, your honor, the defense motions for a... Brief recess, like 30 minutes so I can drop a save. N not even 30 minutes, 15 minutes. Great on a blind eye to the discourtesy as I verify this vile and unremitting accusation. Has it soured the contents? Um, uh, great on a blind eye to the discourtesy as I verify that this vile and unremitting accusation hasn't soured the contents of my hallowed chalice. Lord Van Zeeks! I first had to suffer the pseudonym of the Reaper ten years ago now, and ever since that time I've endured the weight of an implied guilt that's gone with it. So I welcome the chance to testify now, and crush those allegations once and for all. Justice decide, Lord Van Zeeks. The prosecution seeks to begin building its case by calling the accused to the stand as the primary witness, in order that he may answer the accusation brought by the prosecution that he that he is the Reaper of the Bailey. What of the defense? Putting the defendant in the witness stand can be extremely dangerous, and customers are so emotional at the moment, he's not thinking logically. Right that he's not himself. 
but I knew it would be like this. I came here today totally uh, determined to face him, coming through whatever might arise, as a lawyer and as his friend. That, then that's what we must do. The defense has no objection, my lord. But the defense would does motion for a 15 minute recess. Holy crap. Please, I'm... Please, I'm begging you. <laughs> it's been two and a half hours. Very well. Defendant, you will take the witness stand and give formal testimony on the subject of your involvement with the Reaper and the Assassin Exchange. <sighs> two and a half hours without a to-be-continued screen. As you wish, my lord. The Reaper and the Assassin Exchange. I've never taken the life of another, nor have instructed another to kill. I've been investigating the truth behind the Reaper for years, and I was aware of Gregson's involvement. That's the reason why I went to Fresno Street that day and how I came to discover the body. The point is, it's no common thread exists between myself, Gregson, and Dr. Wilson. There's no reason to suspect me of being behind the assassin exchange. Decisions by the prosecution, but that you are the reaper of the Bailey and that you masterminded the assassin exchange. I acknowledge that the public at large believe me to be the reaper. However, that's a fallacy, which I alone am in a position to forswear. Naturally, the prosecution believes that testimony just given by the accused to be untrue. Yes? Let me ask you, why are you here? What really brings you to this courtroom? A desire to uncover the truth. Even if the truth proves your client to be guilty. From all my experiences in this courtroom, I've come to realize something. The truth can't be hidden. Sooner or later, it will come out. So it's always my intention to work with my client in pursuit of the truth. I want you to remember what you just said. You're not dilatory chatter, counsel for the defense. Proceed to cross-examine the witness. Ah, yes, my lord. It's actually what you're thinking, Kasuma. I know you're just wanting to point it out. You're just waiting to point it out. No link between... Van Zeeks. Gregson. Oh, do I have the case file for the professor, or is it just... between Gregson, uh, Van Zeeks, and I forgot who else he's an engine. <laughs> the contradiction you're convinced lies somewhere within this man's testimony. No link between Gregson... Dr. Wilson. Alright, I'm 
gonna save here. Again. <laughs> So you're not what the general public refer to as the infamous Reaper of the Bailey? Exactly. Don't imagine for a moment that the court will be satisfied with a one-word answer on this. I realize that. If you're intending to comment on every sentence, this could take a while, Cosimo. Didn't you find it disturbing, though? That one by one, defendants who've been acquitted after your unsuccessful prosecution were killed. Let me answer that question by posing another. If one by one, defendants who've been acquitted after your successful defense were killed, would you find that disturbing? Disturbing? I could possibly say how that would make me feel with a one word answer like that. Exactly. Well,. Well, that told me. But even as the villain, not the reaper, that doesn't mean I know all the hearsay. Alright, I'm just gonna present. You know what? I'm, let's just. Let's just get this over with. Um. Professor Autopsy Report, right? The Cleanse Autopsy Report. Um, John Wilson, Clint Van Zeeks, and Gregson was the lead detective, so I guess it would be the Autopsy Report. As a matter of fact, that's the only thing we have relevant to the Professor's case. Right now. What is this? An autopsy report? Wait, this is ten years old. The autopsy of Lord Clint Van Zeeks. What? My brother's autopsy report? I'm pleased to see the defense doesn't intend to run from the undeniable truth. Order in the court. What reason do you have for presenting a ten-year-old autopsy report to your counsel? This, the autopsy report of the professor's final victim, is an indelible link between Inspector Gregson, Dr. Wilson, and the defendant. relating to that case. I know that at the time, the autopsy was considered sacrilege to the victim's souls, and for a member of the aristocracy like Lord Clint Van Zeeks, it was unthinkable. But someone implored the powers to allow, that be to allow the autopsy to go ahead, Inspector Gregson. He declared that he was certain he would obtain conclusive proof from the procedure. Oh, you know what? It's even mentioned in the autopsy report. Um, credit to Inspector Grayson for petitioning so doggedly for the procedure. Vital evidence recovered from the stomach during the autopsy. And it was Dr. Wilson who conducted the autopsy. His signature is clearly visible in the document. As promised by Grayson, the autopsy did indeed produce evidence. Evidence that conclusively proved Genshin Asumi was guilty of the murders. In my brother's dying moments, he must have all his remaining strength to leave that vital clue behind. Indeed, that was the key to indicting the professor for his crimes and the conclusive evidence that convicted him. It enabled Lord Van Zeeks to avenge his brother's senseless death with a marvelous victory in court. A marvelous victory, was it? I wonder if that's really true. What? Could the same be said if it turned out that the key piece of evidence in question was in fact fabricated? 
If the inspector, the coroner, and the prosecutor all colluded together. So here's the thing. I think the investigator and coroner colluded. But I think... But Van Zeeks is... But I'm pretty sure Van Zeeks is just innocent. <laughs> to cast an innocent Japanese man as a mass murderer and send him to his death. That's outrageous. And now, ten years later, well, for some reason, the secret has been threatened and needs protecting. Which is why the inspector in the corner had to be silenced. Isn't it... By someone in power in Japan and in Britain. Using the two killers recruited for the assassin exchange. Order! Order at once! Ten years ago, my father was convicted in this very court. Rumors of mass murder to be sentenced to death. But it was all a sham, and I swore to myself that I'd prove it. Which is why I had to come to Britain. Whatever the cost! I'm glad they fixed the witness stand, by the way. It literally got destroyed in multiple, like, like crazy when, um, Jigoku, uh, was indicted. Um, you'll have to forgive me if I feel compelled to toast this vengeful and Japanese's tenacity of purpose here. However... He who fails to wash his emotions in the courtroom has failed as a lawyer. Come on, Kazuma. You know this won't wash. You're claiming your father was misrepresented in a trial that took us a whole, a whole decade ago. You must say that without evidence, that's nothing more than a wild accusation. As it happens, I have evidence. What? As the court has heard, I crossed the channel to France with Gregson on the 31st. I went with him on the pretense of being the assassin recruited to kill Seishiro Jigoku. But my true intentions were to make the inspector tell me the truth. What truth? The truth about the evidence. And he acknowledged what I'd already deduced. There's a closely guarded secret about what went on in that autopsy ten years ago. Ten years ago. What? A secret? I know nothing of any secret. Yeah, you wouldn't. But the prosecutor assigned to the... Assigned to the autopsy probably does. While we waited for my supposed mark in Jigoku's cabin, I drew my coins in the street sword Karuma before the inspector's eyes. He very quickly understood what my true motive was. Right, I see. You're that Asogi's young lad, are you? And what, you're gonna cut me down with that thing? Is that it? That will very much depend on the answers you give to my questions. I want to know what really happened ten years ago. The truth, that's all. Before we get into it, let me make one thing clear. I still believe your father was the professor. There's no doubt in my mind. But unfortunately, back then, we didn't have the evidence we needed to make the crime stick. So, you admit it then? The evidence used in my father's trial was fabricated? It was for the gut of the country. Anyway. I was just following orders. Orders? What exactly did you do? Speak! I'm not saying another word. Even if your life depends on it. That's right. Even then. So that's when the tip of the sword broke. Oh, Kazuma son. If the results of Clint Van Zeeks' autopsy were fabricated, then the investigating officer Gross and the lead coroner Wilson must have known about it. And they can only have been ordered to pervert the course of justice in that way by 
of one man. The man leading the case for the prosecution, Berk Van Zeeks. <gasps> In other words, the defendant did have cause to organize this exchange of assassins. Exactly, and as was established earlier, it has to have been the Reaper himself who liaised with Jigoku in Japan to arrange the exchange. Ah! So it follows that the Reaper's true identity can only be that of the man who stands accused in this courtroom today, Barak Van Zeeks! Objection! Kazuma Sugi. What? You just told the court you're absolutely certain of your facts. Did Grayson really fabricate evidence for that trial ten years ago? I heard it with my own ears. His shameful admission. In that case, I know the name of the Reaper. Whoa! What? Lord Van Zeeks? I gave no such orders. I know that for certain. Which narrows down the remaining possibilities to one. <laughs> Lord Van Zeeks isn't the one behind all this, then yes, there's only one other person who could have done something like that. I believe I know who it is too. You? I just had a feeling this name was going to come up. The true identity of the infamous Reaper of the Bailey is male Strongheart! The only person who could have arranged the assassin exchange and manipulated the autopsy results is the Lord Chief Justice himself, Lord Male Strongheart. What? Lord Strongheart? Yes, it's true that ten years ago the defendant handled the prosecution of the Reaper. or the professor in court, sorry, got the names messed up. But he only. He, and took over the case after his brother, or Lord Clint Van Zeeks, had been killed. <gasps> I can only assume that this is the most inappropriate joke in British judicial history. Well, Lord Van Zeeks, ten years ago, I was very new to my profession. I had a burning desire to avenge my brother's death, so I pleaded for control of the case. The investigation to that point, the supplication of the lords to allow my brother's corpse to be examined, all the evidence I was given, the autopsy reports, it all came from you. I spent my life since then believing I was in your debt for the way you stood aside and let me handle the trial. But I see now. I was very much mistaken. Yeah, he had you under his thumb. <laughs> it was a hugely influential force that caused the inspector and the coroner er, to break the law ten years ago. And that same force was still fought a decade later on the other side of the world by Sashiro Jigoku. Lord Strongheart, everything falls into place when we recognize that you are the Reaper of the Bailey. The court awaits your response, my lord. This may very well go down in British judicial history. But I assure you, it is no joke. Consider this a formal accusation by the accusal, by the defense. The 
Mine doesn't want a response. <gasps> a formal accusal? Don't be absurd. The defense's claims are utter nonsense. Wild fantasy at best. You're not going to defend yourself? You claim there was some wrong doing the board couldn't seek his autopsy. Totally untrue. Objection. But I heard it from Benson's own lips. He admitted to it. And where is your evidence? What? Benson's dead now. Unless you were thinking of summoning a ghost to the stand. Uh, give me a couple. You know what? Maya Faye, where. Um, Tizato, you're probably Maya's uh, ancestor, right? Korean channeling. Do it. You mean to say? I forget how the system works in your little backwater country, but in the courts of British the British Empire, without evidence, there is no case. I have no intentions of entailing some wild fantasy that can't be sub can't possibly be substantiated by anyone or anything. Such a great son's murder and in the light of Dr. Wilson's death as well. There's really no one left who could testify about the events of ten years ago, is there? So that was the real purpose of, those assass of the assassin exchange. This court has no business raking over the coals of a case that was concluded a decade ago. Yeah, well, you're forgetting about one key person. I was gonna say, Dr. S uh, Courtney Seath could do it. Or could, um, testify, but that. One key person. <gasps> Wait a minute. That's right. We can tell, uh, Sasato's father was the one that actually noted these down. Also brought by the prosecution and the defense is categorically denied. I take it there are no objections. <gasps> Kasuma. He's more or less waited his whole life for this moment. Is there really nothing else we can do now? Is there no other avenue we can go down and pursue the, the truth of what happened all those years ago? There was someone who could testify about Clint and Zeus's autopsy. He's gone to extraordinary lengths to cover his tracks. He went so far as deciding an assassin all the way to in Japan to ensure Dr. Wilson's silence. And Dr. Seath won't say anything against Strongheart. But there's still one ray of hope. Actually, there is one person. One person who could still testify about that autopsy. 
Don't be ridiculous. There's no one left. Who will escape? Who? Tell me! Kazuma, I... Please, this trial can't end. Not yet. I'm not doing this for you. I'm doing it for the truth. The person in the defense the defense will like to call him to the stand to testify about the Lord Auto about the autopsy of Lord Clint Van Zeeks is Eugene Mikotoba. Heaven help us. Another Japanese. An expert in forensic medicine, my lord. Professor Eugene Mikotoba. Sixteen years ago, he came to London with Sushiro Jigoku and Kenshin Asogi as a visiting student. And what could his pos testimony possibly tell us? Professor Mikotoba was the primary assistant during the autopsy in question. He was also the person who actually penned the report. Incorrect. The autopsy was carried out by the coroner of Dr. Wilson. The report carries his signature. It was the primary assistant's duty to keep the written record of the coroner's work during the procedure. In actual fact, the coroner really read over the report uh, at the end and signed it. In other words, Dr. M uh, Professor Mikotoba witnessed the entire autopsy from start to finish. The defense demands that Professor Mikotoba be summoned as a witness as a matter of urgency, because this was ten years ago, so he probably doesn't remember much. Whatever really happened in that autopsy laboratory ten years ago is something only he can tell us. The defense's demand is denied. What? But Professor Mikotoba is in London at this very moment. We could summon him to the stand in minutes. No. Of course he's not going to agree to it. Shopper has no intention of selling anyone he knows. He's too concerned about protecting himself. Of course you could just so good. Let me refresh your memory as you seem to have forgotten the persecution's stance. Only minutes ago, you accused the defendant of being the Reaper and the Mastermind in mm, the Assassin Exchange. I... I did, yes. So present your evidence for those claims and make your case complete. I... I... This time I don't have the requisite evidence, but that's exactly why we need this witness testimony. The professor case is closed. There are no clues in the distant past that will bolster your argument today. I'm afraid to say, the prosecutor is so that you would appear to be possessed by the spirit of your late homicidal father. <gasps> Now, as stated earlier, this court has already reached a conclusion with respect to the matter at hand. I mean, it's it's too late. If I if I gotta redo the entire trial at this point, I gotta redo the entire trial. <laughs> Inspector Gritson was voted by a Japanese Supreme Court by Japanese Supreme Court Judge Sisiologiko. As for any hidden circumstances that made yes, they will be investigated in due course by the proper authorities. But we all know what will happen. That'll just give the mastermind of the whole venture time to cover his tracks again. I wish you mean me. <laughs> Your punishment for this contemptible behavior will be decided at a later date. As for you, Prosecutor Sogi, you'll be remanded for following these proceedings within the I trust since you gave your word. <sighs> this futile game of revenge is over, young Master Sogi. scream because it's one in the morning. That will be all. I hereby declare the trial to be over. Quarters. Hold it! M Mr. Schultz! This is no place for amateur detection, Mr. Sewells. May I remind you that these proceedings are closed to the general public? You will leave the courtroom at once. Objection! Mr. Stones was instrumental in the apprehension of Sishiroji Goku before he fled from Europe. 
The court should hear what he has to say. Lord Mayor Strongheart, it's imperative that you refrain from bringing this trial to an end at this stage. Is it really? Or would that be... You need only recall your own words from the opening of the trial to answer that question. If I may. We will stop at nothing to uncover the whole truth behind these disturbing findings. Surely it can't be. That the shock of being accused of being the Reaper yourself has erased that from your memory, can it? The whole truth, sir, has already been uncovered. It would seem that a great many important members of the judiciary are present here today. I put it to you, my dear fellows. Should the trial end at this juncture? After all, why have you been invited to attend? To nod along to all the prevarications of your superiors? Order! Order in the court! It seems to me that we stand before a door that leads to a new era of legal practices. A door that is a jar. Let us emerge from the shadows of the Reaper's decade-long ascendancy. For you and you alone, my dear fellows, I have the power to push this door open now. The auditors in the gallery have no right to express an opinion on court proceedings. Silence! He's right! The judge has absolute authority here! Yes, if he calls the trial to an end, it must end. Will that really do? I said dark things occurring behind the scenes. Dark, dark things indeed. Is there a single person present who can the same? Maybe, maybe just a so single person in prison. And here present who can honestly say he doesn't sense the. Is there a single person sense the same? What? What? The trial should go on! Summon the witness! That's right, we need to clear this up now before that young Japanese man is reprimanded. Is remanded in. Um, before that young Japanese fellow is remanded in custody. My lord, you assured those present that you would uncover the whole truth here. Vindicate yourself of this outlandish accusation! The truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth! That's the Bandari Foundation of British Law! A toast to my dependable colleagues in the gallery. Oh, I'm with the trial, oh, I'm with the trial, Tom Steele. Well, my lord. You hear the voices of the Brit of British justice, I take it. I think you'll find it will be rather awkward to silence. The court will recess briefly. I have no intention of shrinking from these allegations. Bailiff. Arrange for the subpoena of the witness at once. As soon as the gentleman arrives at the courthouse, we shall reconvene. At least this won't be necessary, my lord. Wait. Oh. You know what? Yeah. Let's get to Let's do it. Pardon? He gets a proposal close friend of mine. He accompanied me today and is waiting in the antechamber as we speak. I do believe he's been enjoying a little trip down memory lane, in fact. What? Professor Mikotoba is here in the courthouse? Mr. Sholmes, you... You didn't know this would happen, did you? My dear fellow, no one is in a better position to, to answer that question than you, surely. I wasn't just asking for the fun of it, you know. Well, I must thank you for your assistance in this matter, Mr. Shillings. However, you have no further use here. Can we leave the courtroom at once? But of course, in truth, I find myself rather busy now as a result of these developments. Mr. Naruhodo! Ah, yes? I trust you have Iris's little lucky charm with you. Absolutely. This is all my pocket. She sends her regards and a reminder. If you find yourself at a dead end, the ears are at your disposal. 
Just one tug, if you please. The trial will continue without delay. Bailiff, show the witness to the stand. So it's Lord Strongheart. He's the Reaper of the Bailey. Where it's at is this trial will undertake me, I wonder. Just how deep am I about to be plunged into the blackness of the abyss? Well, I'm ready. I'm ready to head into the heart of this maelstrom and confront whatever horse it tries to drown me under. To be continued? Yeah, to be continued. Okay. That's actually... That's actually, like, perfect timing, because it's one in the morning and I need to go to bed. Uh, so I'm gonna end things off here. Sorry for the slightly shorter stream. Again, I'm just trying to adjust my sleep schedule, and I'm... Not really sure, like, when a good time the stream's gonna end up being, um, but, yeah, that's where we're gonna end things off for tonight, um, which is actually fantastic for YouTube. I was a little concerned that we weren't gonna get another To Be Continued screen, but let's, uh, we'll continue this tomorrow uh where we'll probably finish the game tomorrow as a matter of fact uh it may be like i said i'm trying to flip my schedule so it may be an earlier stream i don't know for sure uh but we will see all right good night and i will see you all tomorrow